OK, in this case study, we're going to show you how you can use Faraday's law to work out an electric field and a current. Now let's assume we have a long solenoid, which has a magnetic field B running up it. And now let's assume that we have an ammeter. And we connect a loop of wire to it that goes around the back and then around the front here and connects up to it. And we want to measure the current in that loop. Now, if the magnetic field is steady, there won't be a current in the loop. Uh, it's just a wire, no batteries connected. But let's say we change the magnetic field. Let's say we change it from B1 to B2. And let's say we take a time at delta T to do that. So at the time zero, magnetic field is B1, and at a time delta T later, it's increased to B2. While that's happening, there is a changing magnetic field, which will generate an electric field around the loop of this wire, which will generate a current. What is that current? OK. So we know that the line integral around the loop of the electric field dot dl is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux, which is the total amount of magnetic field times area, the surface integral over the surface. Now, over most of that surface, there is no magnetic field. Remember, the magnetic field outside a solenoid is very small. The only place where there's a real magnetic field is inside the solenoid. And that's got some area A, let us say. So the flux, the magnetic flux going through the surface of the loop is equal to A times the magnetic field. Um, we'll assume that the solenoid is at right angles to the loop, so that the uh, dot product of the two is just one. If you had a bulging bubble film, you could make the angle different, uh, but then you'd also make the area different, so you'd actually get the same answer regardless. Okay, so now what's the rate of change of this? So the rate of change is how much it changes divided by the time. So d phi by dt, the rate of change is just the change in phi divided by the change in time. So the change in phi is a b2 minus b1 all over delta t. And that must equal the integral of the electric field dot dl. OK, so that's told us how much electric field there is around this loop. Which direction is it going in? Well, for that, um, let's say B2 is bigger than B1. So you've got your B1 pointing like this and B2 like that. So the change is this. Minus the change is that. It's minus the change that drives things. So there's a minus over there for the direction. So we use a right-hand rule for minus that. So if you get our thumb pointing down here and the fingers curving round behind, that means that the fingers are curving round this way, so the electric field will point this way. So it'll be driving a current in that direction around the loop. OK, now what actual current will that produce? Well, the line integral of electric field dot dl is just the voltage, the EMF, electromotive force. It's just the electric field times length added up all the way around. That's We saw exactly the same quantity when we were trying to work out voltages and conserved to fields in a previous video. So that's equal to the voltage. So the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So there must be, if there was no resistance in this whole loop, then it would drive an infinite current. But there's always going to be some resistance, so it's a superconductor. Um, so that will simply give us the current, which is just going to be equal to A, B2 minus B1 over R delta T. And so for a short length of time, the short length of time delta T, you get this current. Before and after, you'll get nothing.